name is Sarah and this is my channel So Sarah Sewed. In today's video I'm going to be showing you the makes I finished in the last couple of months, January and February. Some of these makes I started and finished during my summer holidays um, which finished around the middle of January and then I slowed down a little bit so I thought I would include January and February in this video because I think I only finished um, one item in January. So I thought I'd bundle them all up. And that item I finished in January was the dress I'm wearing today. So, so this dress, you might recognize it from the shape because I actually had two of them included in my most recent video, my December makes video. It is the Vali dress by Pattern Fantastique and I absolutely love it. In December, I made two versions of this pattern. I made a top version, which was my first um, go at this pattern and I made a dress to wear on Christmas Day and I absolutely loved wearing the dress and I decided that yes this was the pattern I was going to use for this coveted fabric which is a linen from Ellie, Whit Ellie Whitaker Studio that I bought oh, I think in November or December 2021. It sat in my stash all of 2022 because I was just too nervous to use it and I also just could not decide what to make with it. But once I'd made this, um, the Valley dress for Christmas, I decided that this would work really well for that pattern. So the Valley pattern is a smock style pattern. The only bit that's fitted is this um, top yoke section at the front and the back. It's got really big voluminous sleeves that are um, elasticized at the end and um, yeah you can finish it either as a, a top or as a dress. The both versions have a curved hemline which I think is really beautiful. There are two options for the neckline. Um, they both have this tie but one of them has a drop uh, neckline which goes even lower so you'd have two sets of ties. One here, another one here and then a more open um, centre front. All the versions I've made have been this version. So I'll put some pictures in. I absolutely love this dress. It is so cool and beautiful to wear on a hot day. It's quite hot in Melbourne today. It's about 34 degrees, I think. Um, so it's been a really nice one to float around in. And um, I finished this while I was on holidays at uh, my parents' beach house. So I was able to take my mum out for a walk. She's got a great camera and she kindly took several hundred photos of me during the walk. And we were able to select a few uh, to put on Instagram and I'll put some of them in here today. Um, the colours in this fabric are just so beautiful. I think what I really like about it is that, you know, while it does have the birds on it, the cockatoo, um, kookaburras, that kind of thing, they're not really in your face. It does kind of just look like an abstract pattern um, for, for the most part, um, but then you can spot these birds in there as well and the eucalyptus leaves in there too. I absolutely love this dress. The only change I made to the pattern were things that I learned from making my first versions. So I didn't bother trying to turn these tiny little tubes. I just made these as I would make a um, bias binding and sewed it down. And the other change I made when I made this dress was to not close the pockets as much. So I didn't come up as high when I was top stitching down the pockets. And that has given me a little bit more room to get my hands in comfortably. So I'm really happy with that change. Um, but I would highly recommend this pattern. If you're planning to make this pattern, you might have read that it's a little bit fiddly. I think that maybe the drop neck version might be slightly more challenging um, because this version really wasn't too bad. I think the hardest thing are these corners where you have to attach the sleeves and the bodice and getting that lined up. But if you've got your um, the marks clearly marked on your fabric with a um, you know an erasable pen or something, I found that it worked pretty easily every time. I did have a few hiccups in the very first one that I made, but that was mainly because I misread the seam allowance, which sometimes changed. But by the time I did this one, it felt pretty simple. So I encourage you to give it a go if this is the sort of pattern that you like. I'm about 160 centimeters tall and you can see in the pictures, it's quite long on me, this dress. I didn't change, um, I didn't change the length of it at all. So if you're shorter than me, you might want to reduce the length a little bit. Um, or if you like this length, but you're taller than me, you might need to add some length, but I really like uh, where it sits on me. It's, um, it feels very glamorous to wear actually, but, um, super comfortable. The next item I made, I also started while I was on holidays, but I didn't finish it until recently, basically because I didn't have any buttons for it. It is the Durban Jumpsuit by Megan Nielsen Patterns. 
This jumpsuit, just like a lot of Megan Nielsen patterns, there are several um, variations. So there, um, there's a sleeveless version, a short sleeve, I think maybe long sleeve, shorts, long pant version, round neck and v-neck. Um, and you can make your jumpsuit in any variation of all those different views. I decided to go with the v-neck, short sleeve, shorts length. And I used a fabric that I got from Nero de Hansen, again, a long time ago. It is in a midweight cotton. And I think the designer might be Jennifer Buron, but I'll try and check that before I post this. So here we have my finished jumpsuit. Now I really enjoyed making this. I thought the pattern instructions were excellent. Um, I didn't have any issues at any stage of the project. The only thing I did have an issue with was getting it on and also the length of it when it is on and i don't mean the length of the shorts but the length through the body so getting it on was tricky because there just wasn't enough room through the bodice for me to get into it comfortably and then um once i did have it on being able to lift up my arms was uncomfortable there's just not enough room through the length for my torso so that was disappointing because i think it's pretty cute um and in fact, I think I liked it better than I thought I would, apart from it just being uncomfortable. It's not, it's not comfortable enough that I would ever want to wear it like this. So I'll put in some pictures and some videos showing. It's, I don't like the look from the back and I don't like the feeling when I'm wearing it. So I'm going to try and refashion this one probably into a top. I think what I'll do is just remove the shorts and maybe add a, a peplum. Um, so that it is a wearable top because it's a bit cute and it would be a shame um, for it to go to waste. So, yeah, I'd like to try making this pattern again, but when I do, I need to add some more length in. So there are lengthen and shorten lines on the pattern pieces. And I think I would add probably an inch or maybe even one and a half inches to this top section and then another one or one and a half inches to the, the shorts. And next time I'm going to make it in a linen rayon um, black fabric that I got from Spotlight, I used a Christmas voucher to spend on that fabric. And I think that'll be a really versatile piece. I'm going to make it exactly the same um, neckline, same short um, sleeves, shorts version, uh, because I really like the way it looked um, apart from it not fitting. Interestingly, I, I looked at all of the posts I could on Instagram that had the hashtag and no one mentioned it being short for them. So it's possible that I just have an unusually long body. Um, it's very possible because I'm also one of those people who, when they make the, J, uh, the Zadie jumpsuit, most people shorten the rise on that, but I find the way it has been drafted fits me perfectly and I don't, I don't shorten it at all. So maybe I'm strange, but... The other thing that I did notice is that not many people showed their Durban jumpsuit from behind. So make of that what you will. I don't know. The other change I'm going to make when I make the next one is the belt. This is a really, really wide belt. And I just think I'd prefer one that's about half the width. Just It was took up a lot of fabric and I just don't really feel like I need such a wide belt. Um, but apart from that, I'm going to give this another go. Not sure when, but probably by the middle of this year. In the middle of this year, although it will be winter here, I am taking my children on a cruise. Um, a couple of years ago, I turned 40 and I was planning to go on a Fiji holiday, um, but COVID meant that couldn't happen. And so I decided that I was going to save uh, my portion of that holiday money and take the children on a holiday this year instead. So I will be this year also sharing my plans for any clothes I'm planning to make for that trip. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to share afterwards what I wore and what I thought worked well. I should mention for both the Vali dress and for the Durban jumpsuit, I made a size 14 for both of those patterns. I have quite the collection of bright items this month and the next item is no exception. It is a patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company. I'd never made this pattern before and uh, a friend and I 
decided that we would both give it a go this um, this holidays. I bought some fabric especially for this project back in January and it's a Miss Moresby design that I got from Nerida Hansen on a lightweight linen cotton. When I saw it online um, I loved it and I still do love it but when this fabric arrived I have to say I was a little bit surprised by the scale of the print. I hadn't worked out in my head exactly how big the print would be so it was a little bit larger in scale than I was expecting and I was a little bit worried that I'd end up with a shirt that looked a little bit like a Hawaiian shirt um, and I think if I styled it in a certain way it definitely would so I'll show you. So as you can see it's got quite the tropical kind of design on it um, and then with the shirt, the, the short sleeves and the, uh, the collar, it has the potential to look a little bit, uh, Hawaiian shirt-ish. Um, so when I tried it on after putting the buttons on the other night, I did think it looked a bit silly. And I think that was because I had it untucked and, um, it was just a bit too much. So I tried it on with some shorts and I'll put some pictures in and I really like the look of it with the shorts. I think it balances out, um, just, just takes away, you know, not too much pattern and also just balances out a bit because it's quite, it's quite a voluminous top in, especially in the sleeves, I would say. So while the, the actual blouse part isn't too oversized, I made a size large for this, which I usually make for Friday Pattern Company, but I find the the sleeves are quite poofy actually on this one. So wearing shorts, I think balances it out a bit. So I actually happened to have a pair of Pomona shorts that I made a couple of years ago in quite a royal blue color, which um, matched, I think pretty nicely. This pattern was pretty easy to follow the instructions. Um, everything went pretty smoothly. I did feel like there were some things that were assumed that you knew how to do. Um, some instructions were pretty brief. I think I'd, I would have struggled with the burrito method um, if I hadn't already done that before. Um, and I also found that just my facing didn't sit very flat, but it gets covered up by the collar. So I decided not to worry too much about it. But there is my patina blouse. Um, I've never worn it yet, except to try it on and take pictures. So um, I've still got some threads that I need to cut out of it as well, but it's pretty much finished. I think one thing that's a little tricky also is lining up the collar and the buttons to make sure that the collar does look even. I sort of feel like this bit's a bit lower than that one. So I might have to sort of press it down into place or something and make sure they look symmetrical so that that doesn't bother me. But there you go, my patina blouse. I don't feel like I'll be rushing to make another one of these. Um, I don't know. I think I'd just like to try some more patterns first. There are two versions. There are a couple of different variations possible for this blouse. Um, you can make a long sleeved version that's got cuffs and there are two options for the neck line. So it comes with pattern pieces for the standard neckline, which is what I did. And there's also a lower neckline. But I thought if I was ever going to wear it to work, the standard one would be uh, more appropriate. And it's low enough for me, quite happy with where it sits. The last garment I made was using a fabric I've had in my stash for a fair while. It's a cotton lawn, um, a Lady McElroy cotton lawn that I bought from my design a long time ago and have been deciding what to make with it. I had actually considered making a patina blouse with this, but I ended up making the Merchant and Mills Florence top. This top is a quite high necked um, top and then it's got a peplum along the bottom. But the interesting thing about the peplum is that the it's got a curve at the back. So the back piece goes up underneath a button placket and then down. So the front piece of the peplum is shorter than the back piece. This is also available as a dress. So exactly the same thing, but it's just longer. I'll put some line drawings in to show you what I mean. Um, I found this pattern pretty easy to follow, um, enjoyable to make, and um, I think it's worked out pretty well in the end. 
but what I wasn't expecting was kind of the volume. Even though I could tell, I mean, I had this, this gathered peplum, um, it's quite a wide boxy top and having all this fabric, I don't know, it just, it from the side, it's, it just looks quite, it like it sticks out at both at the front and at the back. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. It's also very, very short. So if I was to lift both arms up, um, it's quite revealing. So I'm not sure when or how I'll be able to wear this top. Um, certainly to work, I'll have to think about it. I feel like it's the sort of dress, the sort of top that might work over a dress, but I don't really have an appropriate dress. Or if I was to wear it, I'll need to wear a singlet underneath. Anyway, I'll try a few different versions. It looks fine if I'm just got my arms down, um, but if I had my arms up, yeah, it would be an issue. And I do have my arms up a lot at work. I am a music teacher and a conductor. I conduct choirs all the time. I'm often putting my hands up, um, writing on the board, that kind of thing, doing folk dances with my students. You end up putting your hands up a lot. So, um, yeah, I need to be very comfortable and... Uh, confident that my top will not be uh, revealing more than I'd like it to. But here we have it. So it's the Faces Lawn by Lady McElroy. I think it's a beautiful fabric. It's got these cute little cap sleeves and then that peplum. Um, on the back it's got three buttons and then hopefully you can tell that this curves up like that. But yeah, that's the last garment that I made in March. The other thing I finished this month was my quilt top for my journey home quilt. Now, full disclosure, I did actually finish this, I think, on the 2nd of March or the 3rd of March. But I thought I would include it here because it has been such a long journey to finish this quilt. I started it in mid 2020 as a quilt along. Um, but because I was hand piecing the whole thing, I could not keep up. And then once I'd sort of lost um, momentum with that quilt along, I lost motivation and clothing sewing took over around that time for me. And this quilt just kind of got um, put to the side. Uh, but I did have a goal last year to finish that quilt top. It didn't happen last year, but it has happened now. And I'm really excited about it. So I'll, I'll put some pictures in. I can't hold it up here um, because it's just too big and you wouldn't get the full effect. But this pattern is designed by a lady called Karen um, and her Instagram name is Blooming Poppies. And I love the way this has turned out. My next goal will be to make the backing. I don't have any wide um, backing at the moment. My goal this year is to buy as little as I can. Um, you might know I moved house recently and when you move house you really do realize how much stuff you have and because I started quilting before I started sewing um, clothes I used to buy fat quarters all the time um, and I have so 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 many I'm just looking up into a cupboard where some of them are and I I love them but I really I mean I've just got too many of them I also have some yardage of quilting cotton as well that I can use. So hopefully a combination of some larger pieces of quilting cotton and some um, fat quarters that will match the quilt top will work nicely for the back. Uh, I'm planning to quilt this myself. So basically all the rest of the steps will be done on my machine. I won't be hand quilting it um, and I won't be hand piecing the backing. I'll do that on the machine. And um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen with this quilt. Not sure. It doesn't have an intended recipient. I just made it for fun. And uh, yeah, we'll see where it ends up. And that is everything I have made in January and February and a couple of days of March. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've made. I've really enjoyed sharing it with you. And I will look forward to seeing you soon when I share my plans for the upcoming months. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.